we're on the top floor of a warehouse in Surrey Hills. From the street, you'd never have any idea that this, this was up here. We've been in this location for 30 years. This is the way that we painted it. This is the way we did the floors, a shrine right from the very beginning. You'll commonly smell incense in the room and that's a sign of respect for our teachers and for the founders of Jaga Kung Fu. picture of the legendary Bruce Lee. I had discovered Jiao Gao Kung Fu and I moved here in 1982. I first met my husband Sigong Randy Bennett about 30 years ago now when he was teaching opposite Central Railway. He'd just arrived in Australia and pretty much immediately found a location and set up his first Kung Fu school here. He was very precise and very particular. He had high expectations. He would also float through the room, just teach a little move here and there to every student and the children. So he'd always be on the floor interacting with everybody. Quite often when a master passes away, a kung fu school such as this can actually fall apart, especially if it isn't clear who the leaders are, who's the first chosen disciple, and is that first chosen disciple even around anymore? Our school has quite a large network of instructors and assistant instructors, and when he passed away, we were able to draw on the community and with support of people such as Dai C.J. Muriel, who is one of Sigong's disciples, to keep the school spirit going. We have such a close network of people here. People come in. It's not just that they come in and train and, and do their kung fu. They're, because they're training with one another and interacting uh, very physically and directly relationships can be very different than they are, for example, in a gym. People get a really strong sense of community and that sense of community and care for each other and really love for each other uh, kept the school together. And then Sigong's first disciple, Sifu Josh Smith, when he was able, he came back and has been able to lead the way forward for the school from here. I'd taken a few years off um, to leave the nest because this place became my home. And in a bigger picture, I think your Sifu almost becomes like a father figure because the Kung Fu school is like a family. And I was around him every day for 13, 14 years. He was a, a huge part of my life. He taught me a lot of things outside of Kung Fu as well. And I came back for his funeral, which was pretty tough. But I think every, everyone banded together because the school is like a family and we all supported each other. A lot of the terminology used in Kung Fu parallels family. Sifu can be male or female. It's the equivalent of your father or mother. So the relationships, I think, reflect the family aspect of Kung Fu, which is why we form such a strong community right through the generations. I think Kung Fu offers something more than just a sport. It's a culture as well that you become a part of. Ultimately, we become part of a lineage or a history which is a lot bigger than ourselves.